Hello viewers and welcome to my new video. As it often is the case, life writes these stories for me basically so that I can use them in my YouTube videos. And so is the case in this particular example. So today I wanted to talk to you or actually warn you against scam. And you know what? You would be really surprised that us musicians actually can be targeted for scams as well, which is really mind blowing because, you know, one might be thinking, well, what do the scammers have to do with musicians? But hear me out and I'm going to tell you a story, something that's happened to me very recently. So I got contacted on my TikTok account. I received a private message from Rick Rubin. Yes, the, the, the famous music producer Rick Rubin. Or you may say somebody claiming to be Rick Rubin. And let me get down to that point. So I received this message and effectively it came from an account with Rick Rubin's profile picture on it to make it look legit. However, you know, me being a small artist, I didn't necessarily just fall for it like, okay, is it possible in theory that Rick Rubin might be going through some people's profiles on TikTok and thinking, oh, maybe I like this artist or that artist. I would like to work with this person or that person. Yes, I think it's possible. However, we always need to do the due diligence and check these people and make sure that the people who claim to be who they are, they really are that person. So today I actually wanted to take you through my conversation in terms of what happened and how I went about it. So I've got it here on my phone and I'm going to actually read out what was being said throughout that conversation and how that played out. OK, so firstly, I've, re I've received this message. Hey, how are you doing? So I replied, I'm doing well. Thank you. How about yourself? I'm good. The main reason for me contacting you is because I went through your profile and I know talent when I see one. I can see you have great potential and I have made it my life's goal to help talented artists like you to reach their full potential, right? So, okay, Rick Rubin is writing to me saying, you know, he's appreciated my talent and he wants to, you know, help artists like myself. So, I replied, thank you for the compliment. This sounds interesting. Please tell me more. So, to which he asked me a question. So, when did you get into music and what was your motivation? I replied, I got into music when I was a kid, age six, and this has never left me. I started playing guitar when I was 12 and almost straight away I started writing songs. The motivation has always been pure passion for it and also to express myself or convey a message. I just enjoy writing and playing, creating something new that wasn't there before, which is absolutely true. So. He replied, or the person at the other end replied, it's really remarkable that your passion for music has been with you since such a young age and that you've carried that love and dedication with you throughout your life. Writing songs is a powerful way to express yourself and share your thoughts and emotions with others. And it's so impressive that you started doing it so early on. Do you remember what the first song you wrote was about? All right, so, so far the conversation is kind of flowing. It seems like maybe it is really Rick Rubin. I don't know, you know, he's kind of saying the right things, asking the right questions, you know. So, I replied, I can't remember exactly because I put my first band together at the age of 14 and it was a punk band. So I'd say it was probably some rebellious stuff, but I couldn't tell you exactly what the song was about. Neither can I remember it very well, and I doubt that it ever got recorded properly. Which is actually all true. It is all true. So, he's, so he replied, OK then, have you had any notable accomplishments in your career? 
Okay, so I decided to to you know carry on the conversation, and I replied, when I was in bands, I played with quite a few heroes of mine, bands that I admired or grew up listening to. I ended up sharing stages with. This was during my punk and hardcore era. I played with groups such as Deserter, Billy Bio of Biohazard, Subhumans, The Exploited, UK Subs, Sham69, GBH, the list goes on. I have toured all over the UK and also did three tours in mainland Europe, which was a lot of fun. I did a couple of interviews for magazines and radio stations. I released six albums and two EPs in various configurations. Currently, I'm working on my second solo album. Both my first and this second albums are a departure from playing only heavy music. I am now allowing myself to complete. Uh, I am now allowing myself a complete creative freedom, and I capture all ideas that come to me, and they come all the time. And again, this is all true, you know, everything I've said in there is just absolutely correct. And then I received this reply. That's incredible. Sorry, that's an incredible musical journey you've been on. It sounds like you've accomplished quite a lot. It's also good that you've had the opportunity to share the stage with some real legendary bands. The punk and hardcore scene is so passionate and raw, and I know that being a part of that community must have been an amazing experience. It's also good that you're branching out into solo work and exploring your creativity without limiting yourself to one genre. Again, does this sound plausible? I think so, you know, could this be Rick Rubin talking to me? Possibly. However, what I really wanted to do at this point, I wanted to kind of revert back because there was that mention about helping artists and I really wanted to kind of drill down to it and understand what that actually meant. So what I replied was, thank you. I'm glad that you think so. Let's go back to the beginning of our conversation. You said that you made your life goal to help artists reach their full potential. What does that entail? Would you like to expand on it? To which I re received this reply. Of course. Well, in order to accomplish that, I started up a program where I can work with talented artists such as yourself. I will guide and help them hone their skills. Then after they have completed the duration of the program, they will be offered the option of signing with my record label. Sounds great, right? So if I take part in this Rick Rubin's program, I you know, will be offered this record deal with his record label. How, how fantastic is that, right? And it, well, many musicians, many artists, you know, might be really kind of like thinking, yeah, oh my goodness me, you know, I've made it here. This is, this is huge. So at this point, because I knew, I sort of pre knew what was coming that, you know, he was probably going to ask for some money for this program, right? To join the program or whatever. So I thought I'm, I need to verify that I'm actually speaking to Rick Rubin or not, which I suspected I wasn't anyway, but I thought, you know, I'm just going to give, give it the benefit of a doubt. Um, and the way I'm going to, check this is i'm gonna ask for a video call because so could he jump on a video call with me and i can actually see who i'm speaking to i think i thought at that time that that would be like the easiest and the, the best way of clarifying this so i replied could we schedule a video call to discuss it in more detail to which i received the following reply well i can't give out my personal details but if you want to facetime then that won't be a problem. All you need to do is make a request to my management team and we can have the FaceTime when you get approved, right? Whatever the approved means actually. So I replied, okay, how do I go about that? How can I make a request to your management team? And at this point, I received um, an email address officialamericanrecordings at gmail.com. Now, 
There's one thing that Rick Rubin, at least according to Wikipedia, owns this record label called Official American Recordings. However, what's really strange about that is that usually companies have like a proper email domain that they've sort of purchased and it usually isn't like a Gmail account or Yahoo account or whatever else account because the big companies, you know, they they have these like proper whatever company at whatever, you know, that kind of thing, rather than sort of like a, like a private Gmail account, right? And this, he says, this is the official email address of my record label, write the email to them. So, I've decided to write uh, the email and this is what happened. Okay, so I wrote this. Hello, Rick Rubin approached me on TikTok and we've been talking about his artist development program. I asked for a FaceTime call and he recommended that I send an email to this so this can be arranged. I will be grateful for your support in organizing this. Best wishes, Bartek. And this is the reply I received, so <laughs> just listen to this. Hello Bartek, we got your mail concerning your request to be approved for an official FaceTime with Rick Rubin. While we are going to need a few details from you, so as to enable us to approve your request, you should also know that you are going to need to pay a fee of $4,000. All payments gotten from these are donated to charity events and organizations as Rick Rubin wishes to use this medium to help and give back to the society. We hope you understand and await your prompt response. Signed, management. All right, so there isn't even like a name, named person replying to me, just management, right? So it's all like very kind of like a, li a little bit secretive. Um, but, you know, this is, this is what happened. This is what I received, but I thought, oh my goodness me, you know, $4,000. So here it comes. They want my money, right? And this is, this is how it works. So going back to these messages, I then wrote back and I said, okay, thank you. I've sent the email. And then when I received that email back, I actually sent this. I've received an email back from your management team. Look. I wanted to have a video call so I could verify your identity to make sure that I am actually talking to the famous producer Rick Rubin and not a bot or a scammer. You just cannot be too careful about these things. The email reply I got is asking me to pay $4,000. Is there any other way that you could verify your identity beyond any doubt? Right, because I needed, you know, I needed this call just to prove that that person is what they say they are, and they, you know, they've sent me to some like, you know, management team, and then asked me to pay four thousand dollars for for the privilege. So based on that reply, I received another message. Look, I totally understand why you might be skeptical about everything, and that is why I gave you an option of getting approved for a FaceTime, and you spoke with my record label management team. All these are enough to tell you that this is real. And I know that deep down you know it is. I don't have a problem proving my identity, but your current financial situation, sorry, financial state, doesn't make you eligible for any of the options as I can't go on private video calls without my approval of my record label team who ensures my safety in these kinds of situations, right? This is incredible. <laughs> it's normal to have doubt, as everyone will, but you shouldn't allow that affect your decision making. You should know an opportunity, an opportunity when you see one. And if you want to go far as an artist, you have to be able to make use of opportunities like these when they come. So, you, end, you don't end up with regrets later on. Absolutely incredible stuff, right? Pay me $4,000, 
just so I can prove, but you're not gonna see me, you're not gonna see anything, you're gonna have to pay in advance, and then I will talk to you, you know, once you've paid that money, that's, that's crazy stuff. Um, so, to this I replied, I kind of carried on and played along still, so I replied, let me tell you how I see this situation. If you are indeed Rick Rubin, and you are as impressed as you say you are with me as an artist, slash songwriter, etc., why wouldn't you just want to collaborate, i.e. offer to produce my new record, for example? Instead, all you want is my money. Who charges $4,000 for a FaceTime call? By the way, how can you speak about my financial state that you know absolutely nothing about? I could be a millionaire, for all you know but I choose wisely how I spend my money. And I definitely am not going to pay anybody $4,000 for a simple call to verify their identity. If you are really, if you really are who you claim you are, you wouldn't have any problem with proving it without asking for any payment in return. Surely, if you are approaching a small independent artist, you're not going to expect them to have a budget of $4,000 dollars just for a short video call right this is this is you know logical stuff right how about your program and this is where i asked that question because i knew there would be money involved obviously in this so if it is even a real thing how much does that cost i am curious and is there a guarantee of getting signed by your label afterwards that that was my next question where are all the details that i can check any links to an official website? Anybody can steal someone else's identity to scam people for money because that is very true. You know, I could just go today, you know, to say Google Images, find Rick Rubin, download his photo, use a fake, you know, create a fake profile, put that photo as a profile picture, and there I am. All right. So he replied this, or they, or whoever they are. Well, I had it in mind to sign you after the program, but you asked for an official video call. Stop sounding like I asked for you to FaceTime me because it was your decision and I am sure you weren't expecting it to be free. Well, I was actually absolutely expecting it to be free. Your inability to meet up with the criteria shouldn't give you room to talk to me with such disrespect because I won't condone that. I took out my time to reach out to you. <laughs> what kind of language is that, you know, accusing me of, um, you know, disrespecting somebody who wants $4,000 from me and isn't even able to pr prove who they are. Um, I replied this. Nothing I have said has been disrespectful. You wrote to me in the first place and you wanted to offer me something, namely your program. Presumably it is not free of charge, unless it is, in which case there is no issue. However, it is a paid product. However, if it is a paid product, then you absolutely have responsibility to prove the legitimacy of it, and this includes confirming your identity beyond any doubt. I'll give you an example. If my bank contacts me and asks for my details, they advise me to terminate the call and call them myself to check if Indeed, they were trying to talk to me. They do not get upset about it. Quite the opposite. They are happy that I have taken steps to protect myself from being scammed. I did not request an official FaceTime call. I simply wanted to verify your identity and I think a video call is the best way to do so because I can see who I am interacting with. For some reason, you put a barrier to this by proposing that I book it via your management team and pay $4,000. Can you see how that looks like a massive red flag? So that was my response. And here comes the reply to that. I was never upset that you had doubts. That was why I gave you the email address of my record label, so you can speak with them. And you did that, which is the same thing, listen to this, as speaking to the customer care at the bank. I was upset because you came back here to start throwing accusations around, or because you were asked to pay a fee to get approved for a FaceTime. 
I am organizing the program mostly because I want to help artists and producers, and as much as I want to help using the medium of my record label. You need to understand that I own 50% of the record label, and the other half is being owned by Universal Music Enterprises. I do not have full right over the record label anymore, so I can't do a program there for, for free, and I also don't FaceTime or go on podcasts for free. I'm sure you know very well that a video call is the same thing as a FaceTime, and there are many reasons why I can't do those privately without the record label being aware. Someone could make up a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say, right, about something that, I, that never happened and it could potentially damage the image of the record label and mine also. So that's why you need to get cleared by my record label before I can FaceTime and, and the fee attached is for charity and the management of the record label. And about the program. Now, this, this is where it's coming, becoming interesting. You should understand that we will take care of the costs of your music production and we will be responsible for the exposure of your music too so that it can be heard in, in as many places and countries as possible. And we do not charge for that. We only charge for the registration, which doesn't even cost more than $1,000. <laughs> Incredible, right? So this was the last message. And after that, when I went back onto the messages, uh, now, well, after that, uh, TikTok basically said, account not found. So, so now this account is basically sort of terminated, non-existent, I don't know. And the profile picture is removed. Uh, as you can see here, anyway, it's, bl it's a blank, blank photo. Bl 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 blank profile picture, account not found, and that's it. And the person basically stopped communicating with me, and that was it. So, this is what I wanted to tell you today. So, you have to be extremely careful, because we all go through this, you know, as independent musicians. We put ourselves out there, we put ourselves on all sorts of social media, you know, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, you know, even here, YouTube, you know, you can you can get contacted by people for, for, through an email on ver various things. And sometimes people will be offering you something, you know. And, I, and all I'm saying in this video is you have to be extremely careful before you accept any such offer. Because it may sound great on the face of it and you may be thinking, oh my goodness, I've made it, you know, this famous person is getting in touch with me or a, record, or a big record company is getting in touch with me. But always, always, always make sure you triple check, you definitely verify who these people are that are talking to you before, especially before you give them any of your details especially before you know you start sending any money i understand that there are programs out there that people join you know and, and there's various online courses things like that that people can go on and they all a lot of them are legit things and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them but you've got to be careful and always try well always do your best to protect yourself as an independent artist so you don't get scammed and nobody so you know takes your money basically and you will never see that again and before i finish i just wanted to say if this was indeed rick rubin rick rubin if you are watching this and this was really you trying to contact me please get in touch and actually confirm your identity i will be more than happy to work with you and on that note uh, this is the end of my video. Thanks very much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. I'll see you in my next video.